My friends, welcome to this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review, where today I'm revealing one of my favorite pieces of military surplus. This is the U.S. Poncho Liner, also known as the Wubby Blanket. This is a piece of military surplus, a military product that has been around since Vietnam. In terms of overall use, this is a product that has seen action all around the world. It's a very cool product that is adored by many, and in this episode, we're talking about why. I have personally been using one of these for maybe 25 years. My uncle, who was in the Marine Corps, he gave me one of these a long time ago. This is not it. That one was ripped to shreds, but I continued to use it. Eventually, I bought my own. So this episode is all about the Wubby Blanket. To begin, let's talk in more detail about what a poncho liner is, what a Wubby Blanket is. Now check this out. It looks like a blanket, and essentially that's what it is. You could use it as a blanket, all by itself, you could use it with a poncho. You could tie the sides together, make a sleeping bag out of it. And you could also use this as a protective cover. Talking about this product being used as an insulation layer, the one thing that you have to keep in mind is that this is very, very thin. In my opinion, this is good down to roughly 50 degrees with normal clothing. And it does a good job of keeping you warm at 50 degrees and higher. This is without a doubt not a cold weather system here not at all but i have to say i do love the poncho liner the wooby blanket has been a friend of mine for a long time and i use it year round i really do i use it when it's hot and also when it's cold the way that i use it changes depending on the conditions of course in the summertime when i'm out it's warm let's say it's maybe you know 75 degrees during the day low 60s high 50s at night i will use this by itself this makes an awesome lightweight insulation layer especially for the summertime you could cover up, use it as a blanket inside of your tent, and it's awesome. When it gets colder, I stop using it as my primary insulation layer, and I'll use it as a secondary. And what I mean by that is pretty simple. I can use this to add some warmth to my existing sleeping bag. I can use this as a pillow. If it's really cold, and I think I may need some additional warmth, I'll take this with me. All in all, this is a very lightweight product that's also very versatile. Talking about weight, we're looking at two pounds for this version. Now, we should talk about the versions and also the variants, because there's a difference there. There's a difference between the versions and variants I know that's confusing, hear me out. First, let's talk about the variants of this product. So there is the military surplus, like this. This is a legit piece of military surplus. This was made for the government, made for soldiers, and it has been used. That's one. There's also reproductions of this product. Reproductions are where a company takes the overall design of this product and they mimic it. Some reproductions are good, some are garbage. Some come from companies that are based in the United States, some come from China. Then you have the styled liners the styled poncho liners. That is where a company takes like the basic design of the poncho liner and they change it. They, they make it their own, they do things to it. It's not made to the same mil spec as the original. They may call it improved, they may call it the tactical blanket, the tactical wooby. Basically, companies like this will say just about anything to make a sale. And that's for the most part, there are some exceptions, of course. There are companies out there who have taken this design and really have improved upon it. That's a subject for a future episode. Right now, let's focus on this. So those are the variants out there. So you have the military surplus, the reproductions, and then you have the styled ones. Generally, the styled versions are not very good because they're not made to the mill spec. Some are made very poorly, some are not as warm, some are not as big. There's all sorts of issues and problems that come from the styled version. And oftentimes you will see that word. It will say like U.S. military poncho liner style. U.S. military styled poncho liner, something along those lines. Now, my friends, let's talk about the different versions of this poncho liner in brief detail. I'm sure there's people out there who know a lot more about this than I do, so I will keep this brief. This was introduced roughly in 1962. This was initially put into use during the Vietnam era. And from what I read, Special Forces had it first, and then it went out to everyone else. With this product, it basically consists of two layers of nylon fabric. And then on the inside, you have a very thin layer of polyester insulation. The overall design of this has changed over the years, you will find poncho liners in different measurements. Some are longer, wider, some are sewn differently, some have like a seam down the center, some are OD green, some are Marpat, and so on. There's all sorts of different versions of the Wubby Blanket, the U.S. poncho liner. Even though there's different versions of the poncho liner, the overall purpose has stayed the same. This was designed to tie into the U.S. poncho. You can see these nylon cords. Each one of these correspond with a grommet on the poncho. What the soldier could do is take a poncho, integrate the poncho liner, 
and they have a cold wet weather system. While the dimensions of these over the years vary somewhat, on average you could find these in roughly 82 inches long by 62 inches wide. Again, some variants are shorter, some are longer. The overall intent of this product was to replace the wool blanket because wool blankets are very heavy, they're very cumbersome, and they take a long time to dry. With the poncho liner, the materials are synthetic. They dry very quick. It's very lightweight. And it does a good job of providing some warmth. Ultimately, this became the standard issue for soldiers, replacing the standard issue wool blanket, which was ultimately rendered obsolete. The United States Marine Corps has this version here, which has a digital Marpat on one side and Coyote Brown on the other. More recently, there have been new models issued that feature the Army's universal combat pattern and also the United States Air Force's environmental camouflage pattern. There's also a multicam version and a Scorpion II version. There's even a new version of the poncho liner that has a zipper that goes all the way around this thing. I have actually ordered one of those. Those are super hard to find. I should say the legit military surplus version is hard to find, but I did locate one. It's in rough shape, but hey, that's the best I could do. I also ordered a styled version of that poncho with the zipper. So we'll, we'll compare those, we'll see how they hold up. We'll also see what the legit one is like with the zipper. If you're interested in seeing the differences between those two products, make sure to subscribe. Let's take a second here and let's talk about cost, okay? So if you're purchasing these as used military surplus, you can find them for about $17, 20 bucks. When it comes to used condition, the condition is going to vary greatly, greatly. Generally, this is on a scale from like A is great and D, F is bad to terrible. If you plan to buy a used military surplus one, again, you're going to get it for a low price but it may have holes in it, may have repairs, may be ripped, may be stained, discolored, and so on. New military surplus is going to run you about $40. That's not a bad price. The company that makes these for the US military is a company that's actually from North Carolina. They have a tag on this one here somewhere. So it says Winston-Salem Industries for the Blind. Now this is an interesting company actually. They make these poncho liners and they employ individuals who have disabilities as far as vision. Recently they were given permission by the US government to sell these to civilians. So you could purchase these from that company and you could support the company, you can support their initiative as well if you're interested. You have to keep this in mind. With military surplus, a new one of these is about $40. If you want to support this company, these are about $100. I love the initiative, but $100 for this is a little bit expensive. When you consider that there are so many versions, so many variants, so many styles of this out there, some of those products are quite good and they're quite inexpensive. So $100 puts this in a different bracket altogether. And that's something that you have to decide what you wanna do. Whether or not you wanna support that initiative, whether or not you wanna buy just military surplus or use military surplus or go with a variant, you can get a reproduction very inexpensively. You can get a styled version also very inexpensively. Most military stores and sites will have these. In my opinion, eBay is a great source of military surplus. That is pretty much where I get all of my military surplus. It's because there's so much competition on there, you can usually get military surplus at a great deal at a great price. Let's go ahead and take a second here and let's take a closer look at the poncho liner. You can see it laying out here on the snow, and you can also see all of the tie-off points. Again, those are nylon, and there are eight of those that go around, basically three on each side. Here's the label. This signifies that this is legit military surplus. It has the NSN number and all the important details. This is the liner wet weather poncho. This is the Marine Corps version, as you can see with the digital Marpat. When you flip this over, you will see that the coloring is different, even though the materials are the same. The Marine Corps version is coyote brown on the other side. Again, when it comes to the materials, this is a ripstop nylon with polyester insulation. Ripstop nylon on the other side. When it comes to the term wooby, I'm not entirely sure where that comes from. I did a little bit of searching about that, and there seems to be quite a bit of controversy quite a bit of discrepancy. No one seems to know. Some people think it goes to some movie. Some people think it goes back to like a child's blanket. I don't know. And honestly, I don't care. What I've found over the years by talking to veterans and soldiers and whatnot is that some people call them a wooby blanket. Some people refuse to. I get that too. It's not my thing either, really. But some people call them a poncho liner. No matter what they are called, the thing is this. Everyone loves their poncho liner. Everyone loves their wooby blanket. I have yet to hear from anybody who doesn't appreciate this piece of kit. For the price, the weight, this is awesome. And this matches my thoughts as well. So we might as well just go to the pros and cons for this product. This product was designed to be less bulky, somewhat warm, 
It gives you a fair amount of protection from the wind, from the elements. You can use this with a poncho liner. You can use this by itself as a blanket, a sleeping bag, a protection cover. No matter how you want to use this in realistic conditions, it works well. It's low bulk, it compresses fairly good, much better than a wool blanket or even a sleeping bag. It should be mentioned with these synthetic materials. Yes, they dry quicker, they're lighter weight and so on. But when this is soaking wet, it also holds in heat and keeps the soldier warm. That's why this poncho liner goes hand in hand with the poncho. Going back to the newest version with the zipper, I'm interested in seeing that. It still has the tie-offs so you can use it with a poncho, but you can actually zip it up. That's going to be interesting. Coming soon. Coming soon. Talking about soldiers and how much they love these wooby blankets, oftentimes soldiers will get very attached to these and will do whatever they can to keep their blanket, even after they left the service. There's companies out there that repurpose these blankets. They make all sorts of clothing and whatnot. Unfortunately, the ones that I've seen are really expensive. I mean, three, four hundred dollars for a repurposed blanket that's made into like a hoodie. That does not make much sense to me, considering how warm this is. Again, this is good down to like 50 degrees. 50 degrees is not very cold. You have to keep in mind that this is very, very thin. I mean, seriously, I want to state this over and over. This is thin. I'm not sure if you could see through it like I can. It is very, very thin, folks. So make sure not to have any misconceptions about how warm this is. There is a version of this blanket that I haven't spoken about, and that is a version that's being tested out right now with the U.S. military. It is the Advanced Modern Poncho Liner. For the most part, it's the same product with one exception. It was designed to mask the wearer's heat signature. So basically, it hides thermals. There's not much information out there other than the U.S. military was fielding some of these and doing some testing. I do not know if the product's going forward. I don't know if that's a product that will be mass produced. I don't know. When it comes to the cons for these blankets, the only real con that I have is this. And this is a an annoyance that I have with this product. With this ripstop nylon, it's very silky. It's very, very slick. You're inside of your tent, you're on top of your sleeping pad, you have this blanket, it's so silky. You will see that you tend to slide right off of your pad thanks to these materials. Or if you're using this, you're wrapped up and you're sitting like in a chair, you will find that you're constantly scooting around because this nylon is like slick as silk. It really is. That is a minor complaint. That really is the only negative thing that I could even think about when it comes to this product. Talking about this product being so silky with the materials, even to roll this up isn't really that easy because the materials will want to basically slide on themselves. And with that, that's a good place to stop. I love the poncho liner, the wooby blanket, whatever you want to call it. This is an excellent piece of kit. In fact, this is one of my favorite pieces of military surplus. I cannot recommend it enough. It's incredibly versatile. In the summertime, when I'm going ultralight, this is what I often take. Like if it's super hot, I won't even use it. I'll use it as a pillow. If it cools down, I'll throw it over to the top of me. If it gets even colder, I'll wrap it around. I mean, there's just so much that you can do with this. I love it, I really do. And there's a reason why so many soldiers do as well. This is simply a great piece of kit at a great price. It without a doubt gets my thumbs up. If you're a veteran, if you're a soldier, active duty, whatever, you could send me an email, send me a message, and let me know about your experiences with these blankets. I have heard all sorts of stories. It's not my place to tell them, but they're great. If you like this episode, make sure to hit the thumbs up because it does help the channel. If you want to support the Outdoor Gear Review, you can do so on Patreon and here on YouTube. You can join the Wolf Pack. I appreciate you all. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to stay tuned for the zippered version. That's coming up soon. Bye for now, folks. Be well.